Um, PyTorch on Nightly has finally Python 3.12 support, and that's important because first, it makes easier to run PyTorch on Fedora and Arch Linux that both ship, or they are going to soon ship 3.12, so previously we were needing to set up virtual environments or containers which can be so boring for many to do. And second, it should also bring performance improvements to our AI apps. By the same token, let's install the very best open source AI app, Comfy UI, to be most precise, which is an amazing front end for stable diffusion. Hmm, of course, for running it locally, you'll need powerful video cards. So if you belong to the poor group, I'm sorry life didn't treat you good. But on the bright side, you'll have nothing to lose when you die. I'm not kidding. Imagine someone who bought an RTX 4090, but the next day they got stubbed by random dude who was pissed on humanity because his Firefox snap didn't start on time to watch Nyaners live. These last milliseconds before their life is expired, they will be thinking, who the hell will get my NVIDIA? And it might be milliseconds for us, but for them, it will feel like an eternity. A horrible death to face, I'm promising you. Perhaps that's what differentiates hell and heavens, your very last thought. A thought that lasts forever. If it's a good thought, you go to heavens. But if it's bad, you go to hell. But if it's extra bad, like when your best friend is getting your NVIDIA after you're dying, then you might turn into a revenging ghost and hunting them down. My advice? Always bury them aside with their NVIDIAs. Um, what this video was about again? Oh, comfy UI quick getting started. All right, let's do it. I imagine you already have the latest drivers for your card, and for NVIDIA, you additionally need to install CUDA. After you have all those, then you go to Comfy UI repository on GitHub and clone it. And I assume everyone here knows how to clone a repository, right? After you have the repository cloned, and you can clone it anywhere in your hard drive, the second you want to do is to go down on installation instructions and install PyTorch with this command that will use Python 3.12, and it will also get installed with CUDA enabled. Above that, there is the command for AMD cards, okay? After you have PyTorch installed, you'll go to the directory you cloned Comfy UI and you will install all the dependencies. It should take a while, but not that much. While you're waiting for Python to finish, go to Civit AI and then click on Models to download a model. Alright, if you're new on Stable Diffusion, the first thing to know here is that we have two different types of models. Our model will be either a checkpoint, and that's going to be our base model, the starting point of our artwork, and it's required to generate an image, or it can be a LoRa. LoRa's is basically smaller models that can be applied like add-ins on checkpoints to improve various details of the generated image. In another video, I'm going to show you how we can train a custom LoRa with around 30 to 50 images. And obviously, we're going to train a model that will generate user interfaces for the Linux desktop, because screw the designers. They are so obsolete. For now, we'll just download a checkpoint, and let's start with this one. Although the generated art won't look anything like the featured image, it needs lots and lots of time to succeed awesomeness. But as AI gets smarter, it should be a matter of seconds in a couple of years, Max. Anyway, um, download this, and you should place it inside Comfy UI, Models, and Checkpoints. I have it already, and the application will automatically discover it without need to edit configuration files or anything. Okay, time to start the application. And that will launch a web app, and I might get out of context here, but that's exactly why I consider very important for toolkits. For example, iStarS to be WebGL ready, because web it's freaking important, no matter how hard GTK is trying to deny it. Anywho, back on track. Um. Let me first go back to the default workflow so we can sync our setups if you are going to run this. Now we're starting from the checkpoint node that we basically load our model and imagine Excel version three in this case. Then we have a prompt that is connected to positive sampler. So we say what we want the model to draw. For example, a boy on his house loft doing programming. We want this to be a far shot and the boy has red hair and green eyes. And on negative prompt, we can tell that the computer isn't a Mac OS, because that's more usually what the models draw. Meanwhile, you see what I'm doing wrong here, don't you? On latent, we can set the dimensions. For example, we can make it landscape. And maximum on XL is 1024, but we can upscale it to 4K. I'll leave batch to a single image for saving time. Next is the sampler that is the most important node here. Seed is a number that determines the initial state of generation process, and it's useful when we want to remix images or create variations. Um, nothing we need here. 
I'm leaving control after generate to randomize for more diversity, plus it's faster. Steps is the number of iterations that the stable diffusion model runs to transform the initial noise into a recognizable image. A common value to use is between 10 to 40, with 40 giving better results. It depends to the sampler, actually, but I'll leave it to 20 to make it faster. CFG means classifier-free guidance, and it controls how closely the generated image follows the text or the image prompts. It gets a scale value between 1 to 30, with 1 meaning a complete freedom, whereas 30 is fully restricted to prompt. Usually 5 to 8 works for most cases. Then it's the sampler option, which is basically the method of the denoising process. Mmm, but there are so many. I'm not sure which I should go for. I don't really know, but I read that UniPC, aka Unified Predictor Corrector, needs the less steps for producing the same high-quality images to other samplers. And I'll pick Keras Scheduler, but nevertheless, this involves testing and repeating until you discover what works best for your goal. By the way, there is this nice article that explains the stable diffusion samplers. I'll leave the link on YouTube description if you want to read. Alright boss, we are almost done. Basically, I have skipped lots of steps, but I promise you I will come back with the most absolutely sweetest guide of stable diffusion ever created. Obviously, there are lots of cool nodes you can connect, like animating the image, basically producing video, but because my video memory will die, we can try a simple humble upscale on the same workflow with the upscaling node. First, we need to connect this to the image output. Um. And I guess that people who know how to use Comfy UI are now cursing me on the way I'm doing it, because design point of view, Comfy UI features one of the smartest node systems. But that will work too, so we can quadruple the width and the height of the image and get a 4K. And next, we can start generating the image, although I would really like to see Comfy UI doing it with a much more dramatic way. After we hit on Q prompt, the process is starting, and there is a green selection on the active nodes. So now the stable diffusion is on loading the checkpoint. Next, it will go to prompts, and so on. Most of the time is spent on sampler, and with GTX 1060, it takes around three minutes to complete. But a nice thing is that when a node needs lots of time, it draws a progress bar. Alternatively, we can also check on terminal that outputs the percentage. Um, basically, I'm gonna stop the screencasting and I will come back when the rendering is finished, okay? But the rendering never really finished because I was working on Unity and it ran out of memory, so I rerun it skipping the image upscaling to make it faster. Anyway, and that's our image, boy with red hair and green eyes programming on his computer, but that's so beyond of what we were really expecting. Next time, I'll show you how to produce images like the ones on the video intro, and of course how to generate user interfaces, which I'm currently working on it. Um, when I started this, I was going for a 4 minutes video tops, a really quick starting guide. If I knew it would take that long, I would have dedicated 4-5 minutes more to cover so much more stuff. Video failed, actually.